we're actually going to stay in Ephesians today. Uh, I think next week we're going back to the Gospel of Mark. Um, but uh, the passage I'm going to is Ephesians chapter 5, verses 15 through 21. Ephesians 5, 15 through 21. And maybe I'll ask everyone to, to stand as you're able as uh, we read God's word this morning. Ephesians 5, 15 to 21. Paul writes, Look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, making the best use of the time because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery. But be filled with the Spirit, addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with your heart, giving thanks always and for everything to God the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ. Amen. You may be seated. Hey, let's just turn to the Lord in, in prayer once again. So, Father, we just uh, uh, we are so grateful and thankful to, to have your word. We thank you for it. We just uh, pray that that your spirit would uh, would teach us now as we as we look into uh, the truth that you have for us, um, and again, I just pray that uh, that that only your truth would uh, would stay in our minds and our hearts, and that not the words that I say, and especially anything that that I, I may be incorrect, Lord. But we know that your word is truth, so we just pray for uh, your your teaching us this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Have you ever thought about what you can learn about someone by observing the way they walk? Or, or have you thought about what others can see by the way that you walk? I've been, been told, not, not in a critical way, but uh, I've been told that I don't, walk the same as I used to after <laughs> my accident. And, and that's, you know, injuries are, are obvious uh, as, we, as we watch uh, people walk. And actually with livestock, uh, you're constantly observing as you're checking your livestock, observing how they, they're walking. And that gives an indication of, of how how they're doing. Isaiah 52 verse 7 tells us, we all know, how beautiful on the mountain are the feet of those who bring good news. Communication before all our social media and telephone and even newspapers and, and so on, was communication was, happened through uh, sending messengers. And so messengers would travel quite a distance to, to bring news uh, back and, and forth. And people could tell by the looking into the distance and watching the messengers coming, they could actually tell by the way the messenger was walking whether they were bringing uh, good news or bad news, just by the way the person walked. I can vividly remember at least parts of the story, uh, an incident that, that happened during my high school days, and it was on a school trip uh, to New York City, and my friend that was, was with me for this uh, event, um, I, I asked him the other day if it's okay to, to mention this story and his name, and it, oh, that was fine with him. He couldn't remember, uh, remember it as vividly as, as I do, but... Uh, but my friend was, uh, was Robert Murray, who's Ga Gavin's father. Most of us know Gavin. Um, 
and, and he and I were in high school together. And anyway, so on our school trip, uh, we, of course, did the regular touring around with, with the class and so on. But, but during that time, you know, you always get some sort of free time or whatever, time on your own to do whatever touring you want. And it was during that period of time that Robert and I decided to go somewhere, and I don't, that part I don't remember. I don't remember where we were going, but I just remember us being in the, the sub, down in the subway, and we were walking along with, with the crowd, massive crowd, just packed. But then, then it seemed like all of a sudden, everything got quiet and, and people were gone. It just, it just kind of vacated. And we were continuing to walk along, and I was walking with my, my camera hanging, you know, strapped around my neck, my prized Pentax ME camera <laughs> dangling there, and uh, it, I hadn't got it brand new. I'd got it used, but I had got it at a camera store in Ottawa. And anyway, we're walking along, and just at the moment when, when Robert kind of turned to me and he said, you should really have that camera under your jacket. Uh, that was the moment when you could, you could sense, you could feel there was someone approaching us very quickly. And I knew by the walk, it wasn't somebody bringing good news. <laughs> it turned out to be a very big guy. Now may, maybe he, in my memory, was bigger than he was, I'm not sure, but he, he seemed big. Uh, he seemed bigger than Robert and I put together at that time anyway. And he reached, reached over and he grabbed my camera and, and said, let me see, let me see your camera. And, and honestly, this, I was not being brave. <laughs> I didn't let him see it. I, but it was just probably frozen in fear. I, I didn't let him see it. Um, and fortunately he, he let go and, and walked, walked away. Now, if anyone had observed my walk after that, <laughs> they would have seen my knees shaking for sure. Uh, anyway, just another little illustration, just like our, our little pet dog illustration, uh, of how, how much our walk can, can tell someone or what we can tell about someone by their walk. It's, it's telling something to to other people and hopefully by God's grace we will have the wisdom to watch how we walk. Now over the, the last few weeks Jason has brought us such excellent teaching from, from this letter from Ephesians in the a little later in this chapter and then the start of chapter six. Um, so the passage I read is just before before that. So in a sense we're we're going through Ephesians backwards now. Uh, but uh, but the teaching and the wisdom is just, uh, just amazing that Paul uh, gives. To, to, read, to read Ephesians, it doesn't take long to read it. Just sit down and read it in one reading and, and it's just amazing. The Apostle Paul wrote this letter while he was in prison in Rome. And my, I'm, I'm assuming this. This is just me, so no, there's no... Uh, uh, it's just a thought. I'm, I'm assuming that in God's providence that possibly one of the reasons God allowed Paul's imprisonment was so that Paul would write. And of course we know what he wrote in scripture was by inspiration of God's spirit. Uh, I can't imagine Paul having much time to do that otherwise. He was a worker. He, he go, go, go. He ran his own business, making tents to support himself. He preached, he traveled. You know, when we follow his travels on the, the Bible maps and, and so on, just following, trace, trace his steps and think of doing all that without modern transportation. I don't think he had much time to, to sit down until he got chained up. And like I said, if you read this letter from start to finish, it doesn't take long, you will really sense the excitement that Paul had as he considered the extravagant grace of God. Paul is so amazed at the thought of our redemption. He marvels at our spiritual blessings, 
reminding us of who we are in Jesus. He overflows with thanksgiving. We were dead in our sins. We walked in the ways of this world following the deceiver himself and our own desires. But God made us alive in Christ, and he has made us living stones, building us into a dwelling place for God. Paul goes on to explain the unity that we have in the body of Christ, that we are being built together in love. And then earlier on in in chapter 5, in light of all that God has done for us and in us, Paul writes in verse 1 and 2, Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children, and walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Paul goes on then to tell us to walk in the light. And then as we come to the verses that we read in verse 15, he writes, Look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise. Now to someone who is not a believer in Jesus, the walk that Paul describes looks like foolishness. And of course the the walk is, uh, it's a lifestyle. It's, It's... the reason we are, it's, it's, it's who we are. But God reveals to us in his word that the opposite of what the world thinks is true. His kingdom, God's kingdom, is, is really appearing upside down to our natural way of thinking. Scripture defines a fool as a person who says in his heart, there is no God, Psalm 14.1. A fool makes judgments on his own by his own feelings and perceptions and understanding. Proverbs 12, 15, the way of a fool is right in his own eyes. We can have all kinds of knowledge and ability and intelligence, but according to God's word, if we rely purely on human knowledge apart from God, we are fools. Look carefully then how you walk. Now I've made this little, uh, I guess what you call a, a cryptic or whatever, so we'll, I don't know how, it, anyway, we'll, I'll give it to you here, but I used the word wise, I was thinking of this last night, and, and worked it out this way, looking at this passage. The W, uh, willingly dedicated, and then the I, informed, I started with informed, and then I kind of, then I thought instructed, instructed biblically, or informed biblically, and then spirit-filled, and then the E, expressively unified. In our daily lives, we understand that we are to submit to our authorities that God has placed over us. We do this as good citizens, but only to the point that is still within the commands of our ultimate authority, the Lord himself. To him, we are willingly dedicated. Verse 16 reads, making the best use of the time, or it can be translated, making the most of your time. Other versions are redeeming the time. Now in the Greek, and like we know, our language English isn't that descriptive compared to other languages, and, and we've lost how many words? Thousands of words we've, we've lost. Uh, but time in Greek, there's two words for time, the chronos, which is the, the clock time, and the kairos, which is a measured time, a fixed season, a period of time. And that's, it's kairos, this period of time, is, is, that's the word that, that Paul is using here. It's like saying, like kairos is like saying uh, that it's harvest time. Now is the opportunity to bring in the harvest. Making the best use of time because the days of evil. Paul is saying seize the opportunity. We need to have a willingness and dedication the commitment to serving, living, walking carefully with wisdom. Ray Stebman explains that this essentially is meaning that, that evil days create opportunities. We don't, we don't really think of it that way, right? Uh, 
Now, and it may not feel like a great opportunity. We like the good days, right? Uh, but it is in the challenging times that we are given the opportunity to honor our Lord and to see him work or to be part of his work. Uh, Jim Elliott, the, the quote that we just so often repeat, uh, said, he is no fool who gives what he cannot keep to gain what he cannot lose. It was in laying down their lives as they reached out, these missionaries, Jim, Jim and, the, and the group of missionaries that, that reached out in love with the gospel message to a people who were living in fear and isolation until they finally understood the hope of the gospel. But those missionaries and countless stories since then show how willingly dedicated to the Lord, uh, how we need to, to just put our lives on the line for, for his sake. We also need to be instructed biblically. You can't just do this on your own uh, wisdom or your own thinking. Living for the Lord is, is taking that instruction from God's word. Verse 17 uh, Paul says, therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. We need to distinguish between the Lord's will and the Lord's guidance here. We tend to think, lump everything as, as the Lord's will. If, if you're single, is it the Lord's will that I should marry? If, if uh, you know, who should I marry? What job should I take if you're looking at a job or if you're thinking of retiring, when should I retire? All those things we need God's guidance for, uh, but that's not what's referred to as, as the will of the Lord. We can certainly, certainly need guidance in all those areas, but concerning God's will, we can be instructed biblically. It's, it's right there in front of us. Scripture is full of specific revelation of what God's will is. This is where we, we live in obedience to him, living as Jesus did, imitating Jesus. Living lives of purity and not living a secretive life, but living as an open book, living in the light. This doesn't mean that we're perfect, but we, we live as, as David did, seeking God's heart and continually repenting of of the things that we do wrong, of the sin in our life, as the Lord reveals that to us. This, this has effect on every area of our life. We live the same way, whether it's at church, at work, or at home. And then spirit-filled, verse 18 says, and we do not, and do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the spirit. So Paul paints a, a contrast here and the background to, to Ephesus and what was going on is that there actually was a, a cult, the cult of uh, Dionysus, that was very, very popular. And what, what they were teaching, and it was readily accepted by human nature, um, that they were teaching that overindulgence uh, through overindulgence that, that you could attain a higher level of spirituality. So mindless drunkenness, indulging in a, any and every passion that, that one desired. That was, that was the teaching. And, and people grabbed that. Now that's opposed, Paul opposes that to the teaching of a life yielded moment by moment to the Holy Spirit who indwells each and every believer. The filling of the, the Holy Spirit is the momentary taking from him of the resources you need for the situation that you're in. It has nothing to do with experience or feeling or crisis. It is a quiet drinking again and again of an inner supply of strength. And of course, we, we think of in John chapter uh, 4 of the, the woman at the well. And as Jesus uh, met her and, and spoke to her and, and spoke to her of of the, the water that, uh, that she could have, that she would never thirst again, that he could provide to, to her. And, of course, she couldn't understand that. But 
the well that that Jesus was speaking of was was within her as as Jesus as God's Spirit indwells a believer. We have that uh, that well that supply. Now we shouldn't confuse that with with the twist. There's always a twist to the truth, and of course the modern, which is an old lie twist, is that God is in all and all is God. That's not not what Jesus was teaching, but those who believe God's spirit indwells. And we can continually draw on the resources of, of God's spirit. Then we come to the, the, the last verses that we read, which describe, I'm, I'm calling uh, us being expressively unified. Now, the, as we look at that and we consider the times that we're in right now, looking around, and we see there's an increasing level of polarization. It does, on so many issues, so, so many problems, and, and people are there or there. Like, it's just uh, so polarizing. People have legitimate concerns, and the, there are so many issues that, that we're facing today. And I'm not going to get specific on any of them, because it, it just... Uh, it takes so much time. But we need to understand, we want to make the most of the time, as Paul is telling us. And I'm sure that we can all agree that our culture is going downhill and going downhill fast. Great thinkers like Francis Schaeffer, which that was decades ago, gave, gave warnings. C considering the philosophies that were being, becoming popular again for old, old lies, and he could see that, and, and others who were uh, great thinkers. It is so important to walk with wisdom now as ever. Many issues that we're facing, we do have clear biblical teaching on. We know God's will. It's obvious. There are other areas and issues that we need to pray for God's guidance. And we also need to be aware of mindless ideologies. People in general, have lost the ability to think. When you, you listen and when you follow social, social media or, or listen to uh, the news or anything, uh, it just seems like people can't think. People make generalized statements that have no factual backing or at least no understanding of an issue or situation, and then there's a reaction and a counter-reaction, and it just goes on and on, name-calling. We are told what to believe now. And we're just told, told it, this is, this is uh, the science, or this is this, or this is that. You're told what to believe. We're not given clear and honest facts to think through. I, out of curiosity, I, I don't know how I got onto it, but listened to, I was looking at uh, economics. This was a while ago, and, and listening to debates, political and economic debates, and calling up stuff on YouTube, and and came across uh, like a couple of men that I, I don't think are believers, uh, but they're just good thinking economists and, and uh, professors and so on. But one was uh, Milton Friedman and the other was Thomas Sowell. And, and you go back to these old recordings that, that you can get on YouTube and, and it's just fascinating listening to, to them uh, or to debates they have with, uh, with others you know, of different and economic persuasions or, or whatever. And, and it's absolutely fascinating. And the, and the questions that come from, uh, from students questioning them are uh, excellent questions. And, and uh, it just so, uh, it's so enlightening just listening to, to people like that talk. And I don't, I don't see that. I don't know where you'd find that anymore uh, just in the secular uh, world. People just don't don't do that, uh, and even I think I, I think that was on TVO one time I, I saw where a professor was talking about free speech and and they they had a panel it was probably uh, that Steve guy there on TVO and a panel talking and the the one to me who made sense was saying, I think, I think this professor, I think she'd been heckled and she wasn't even able to give her presentation. They just 
made noises and and uh, shut it shut it down and how and they call that they're calling that free speech how can that be free speech to not to not let someone uh, give give a talk and then and it just it's just mind-boggling to and it, we see it in politics we see it everywhere the the difference just to go back a few decades just, and again just in secular society not uh, the, how far down we've, we've come. But as believers, we don't follow the world's ways. We understand that we are in a battle, but it's against the forces of darkness, not those living in that darkness, that, that are victims of that darkness. It's, it's not against them. So that's where we need to be careful how, how we walk, how, how we present our faith and how we react or that we don't react to people we need to realize that that they're blinded they can't they can't see and so we need to reach out uh, lovingly as Jesus did we know that when we when we look at what Jesus did he was pretty hard on the religious types but but the regular common folk he reached out in compassion to them. They were living in blatant sin, sinful lives, but he reached out in, in compassion. We are unified in Christ. We have reason to be expressively uh, united and unified. We can, we can show that. We must show it. We all, we all have uh, that... Uh, that God-given uh, gift to, to be able to, to love, to draw on that, uh, that spirit, that Holy Spirit's power that's, that's in us, to, to show that love for one another, even, even at times when we may not uh, fully agree on, on some issues that aren't, aren't clear in, in God's word. In general, we realize that, that everyone, everyone has faith. They, the, the secular world look look at us as believers and and say that we take a leap of faith but but think about it and try try to get them to think about it not again not in an argumentative way but try to uh, and this is what we all need to brainstorm on is is how to draw people out and help them to think through instead of making a a quick statement or a line and then getting a reaction, uh, draw them out about a statement or a thinking that they have and, and try, to, uh, try to develop that. Uh, help them to realize that, that we're all living with faith in something or someone, uh, even though they consider faith in God to be a, a leap, I would, I would say that Living without God is more of a, a leap of faith than living with him. Think of all the faith it takes, and people seem to have it nowadays, to follow human wisdom. It's just being gobbled up. Uh, and we need to ask, well, where is this leading, this, this great human wisdom? Where is it leading us? James Taylor, in his song, The Secret of Life, wrote about a worldly perspective and I just, I think I found this from uh, listening to Alistair Begg. It's not a song I ever listened to myself, but he, but he drew uh, th this as an illustration. And, and when, you, when you go through all the words, it's just, it's totally depressing when you actually think about it. And, but this is the world's perspective, really. Uh, the secret of life is enjoying the passage of time. Any fool can do it. There ain't nothing to it. Nobody knows how we got to the top of the hill. But since we're on our way down, we might as well enjoy the ride. And that, that really sums it up, eh? Like, uh, that shows uh, uh, a way, a wa walk of life that, that is certainly without God. As believers, let's, let's be wise, not unwise. Let's be careful, look carefully at how we walk. 
Let us pray. Father, we just uh, are thankful this morning for the, the wisdom that, that you give us through your word. And we know that, uh, that there is a, a battle going on and, uh, and the way that, that, that Satan and the, and the powers of, of darkness are, are deceiving people is, uh, is tremendous. Father, help us to, to realize, help us to see the difference. We only can see this as we, as we study your word and reflect on, on your truth. And the difference becomes so clear. Please guide us in, in seeking your, your wisdom. We pray for, if, if there's anyone uh, with us or listening on today that that hasn't uh, hasn't considered uh, the call that that you have made a call to repentance and and to believe to have faith in Jesus that that you would open their their hearts and their minds to to your truth and for those of us who who believe help us to to just uh, be able to to sift out the the lies the deceit that that is so prevalent and and gets into our minds because we're uh, we're faced with the propaganda of of the evil one of destruction uh, daily, momently, just all the time through the culture that that we're in. So, Lord, we need need you, your, your word, your guidance to just uh, teach us how to walk, how to live our lives, that we would honor you, bring glory to you, and, and somehow make, make a difference as, as you lead us uh, in the, the walk of life and in our, pil- our pilgrimage as we... Uh, as we are passing through this this world, to go to uh, to a better place, the place that that you have created, that we would be uh, with you forever and ever, and we look forward to that that time. We look forward to the the coming again of our Savior, to take us up to to be with Him, and we just uh, just thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen.